Hey guys, I thought I'd show you my latest project. Uh, this is a micro-stepping uh, driver uh, and motor here. So what I've got is an SLA7062 chip. This is a, an entire stepper controller and it's wired up. Um, there's no circuitry on the breadboard. This is just to keep my wires straight. And it's controlling this stepper motor over here. So as you can see, it's going around nice and slowly. Uh, the goal of this project is to have two stepper motors well, they don't have to be steppers, but two motors that are uh, operating in synchronicity and they're moving very slowly. So uh, ultimately these will go into an old Wurlitzer jukebox uh, where there's two motors that uh, control the colors that come out the front of the jukebox. They turn uh, physical color wheels. So the original motors are just uh, AC um, synchronous motors. Well, not really synchronous. They're um, like clock motors. But the problem is that the color wheel loads the clock motor down enough so that they don't spin in synchronicity anymore and then the colors become out of sync on the front of the jukebox. So uh, the improvement here is to replace those clock motors with something that actually is synchronous, like this stepper motor. Then the problem I ran into, I mean normally I just would just drive this with my own transistor driver circuit. In fact, here's one that I built here. It's just a, an AVR microcontroller with some output transistors to drive the phases of the stepper motor. So the problem with this is that the stepper motor would sort of click around. It was not a very smooth operation at low speed. Uh, one of the problems is that this stepper motor is I think seven and a half degrees per step or whatever the, the coarse uh, common stepper size is. And I chose this motor because it's going to fit into an assembly that's already in the jukebox. So another requirement of this project is that it be easily inserted into the jukebox with minimal um, modification of the, of the hardware there. So the size of this motor and the shaft length and all that stuff were pretty much perfect. So I really want to use this particular motor. Um, anyway, so I've got this thing hooked up with the chip and as you can see it is actually going around you know pretty smoothly and it's got enough torque. It, it really doesn't need much torque at all. Uh, the existing clock motors were just really really weak so any loading at all was, was too much for them. Uh, I think I've got this thing pretty much all figured out. The remaining problem is that this thing is noisy in and of itself. I mean I think you can hear that from here on the camera but let me just bring it close to the microphone. Yeah, it's a real squeaker and so I, <laughs> I think I might be able to fix that by um, adding just a little bit of capacitance to these motor windings. Uh, to keep down some of the, the sharp transients in the ringing that's probably causing some of that squeaking noise. Uh, anyway, let me zoom in on the chip and tell you a little bit about how that works. So here's a block diagram of the chip. Uh, by the way, I'll put a link in the description uh, to where I bought this since they aren't particularly easy to find. Uh, the chip has H-bridge drivers for each of the phases of the stepper motor. This is meant to drive a unipolar stepper motor and the inputs to it are a, what it calls a clock, which is really just going to increment uh, the step or increment the micro step and if we have it configured to do that. And, and then it uses uh, some current sense resistors and it uses a reference voltage. So I'll get into the details a little bit later, but the idea is that this wants to control the current going through the motor windings, not the voltage. So it really needs to know, it needs to have a current sense resistor in series with the motor winding and then it checks the voltage across that sense resistor and compares it to the reference voltage so that it uh, knows when to cut off the, the, uh, the motor current. So by changing the reference voltage you can control how much current you want to go through each phase. The, the chip has a few other settings up here. Uh, M1 and M2 define how many uh, micro steps it's going to make. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, a typical stepper, I guess they're not going to show half stepping, a typical stepper would just have either the current is positive, zero, or negative for each phase. And for a unipolar stepper motor, you're really just switching which wire it's going through. So in a bipolar stepper motor that has four wires, what you can do is just uh, swap the phase, or swap the, uh, the direction of the current going through the coil. In a unipolar stepper motor, you have at least five wires, usually six and sometimes eight. And what you do is you just switch which ones are connected. So for the A phase, that might take three wires. 
and I can choose to put current through one wire, no wires at all, or choose the other wire, and the third wire is a common. Um, so typically, like I say, with normal half-stepping or full-stepping, the current is either on, zero, or off. But with micro-stepping, the controller has the ability to modulate the current going through each phase. So in its sort of high-resolution mode, it can really approximate a sine wave, which is really what we want. Um, stepper motors would actually operate perfectly well on 90 degrees out-of-phase sine waves. I think I might even try this. I, just, just as an experiment, if I had a real sine wave generator, then I could get 90 degrees out of phase, uh, feed those into the, into the stepper motor and see how quiet and, and uh, smoothly it runs. But anyway, I'm pretty happy with the performance of this chip, so I'll probably stick with it if I can uh, make it acoustically just a little bit quieter. These higher speeds like this, it sounds quiet. I mean, it just has mechanical noise. I don't hear the, the squealing from the... Um, PWM on the motor windings. Oh, that was another interesting thing. The PWM frequency that that SLA chip puts out is not really stated. I think somewhere in the data sheet it says there's a seven microsecond off time or something. So it waits for seven microseconds, turns on the power, and then waits for the current to um, uh, reach the reference voltage. So basically it turns on full power and then as the current starts flowing through the motor winding, the voltage across those sense resistors will rise, and when it reaches the reference voltage, then it cuts off and waits for another seven microseconds. I believe that's how it works. So I have it set up with uh, uh, one ohm sense resistors, these nice ceramic guys here, and so with a one volt reference voltage and a one ohm sense resistor, we'll get one amp through the motor uh, for, I guess, I think that's the target. So one amp and then it cuts off for seven microseconds and then it builds up to an amp again or something. I've looked at the waveform and it's actually very really difficult to see what's going on in there. And I've tried putting some small capacitors on the output of the chip uh, to see if I could kind of smooth it out a bit and that doesn't work very well at all. <laughs> I, that confuses the, um, the, the circuitry. I think it's anticipating an inductive load and that's basically how the chip was designed to work. So, um, maybe I'll do another video when this thing is all done um, and see how the jukebox looks from the front. Okay, see you next time. Bye.